I'm a fucking booty stuffing and dying up.
We will have another set, Soul Seed, right after the speaker. All the 
beings of nature purified with that divine love and light and the power of the infinite numbers of suns from all the discordant energy and substances like poison made by the limited human misuse of God's light. May all the powers of light come forth and free the earth from all the human limitations and all the shadows of the unfortunate individuals. May divine plan be fulfilled, established, protected, and expanded for all eternity. I have an announcement for the mural that we're painting to show to our governor and to all our brothers and sisters that are currently serving in the government. And the painting has symbolism of our demand to light, demand in purity and perfection that we can establish here if we choose to. And we do choose to. We call upon your organic organ and stop all the poisoning in all the substance of discordantly qualified pesticides and all the discordant substance. We call upon the recoil to all those forces that make those substances. May they be led unto themselves. May they be women and compelled to serve the light and justice. We call upon Organic Oregon. Can I see? Can I hear that from everyone? of America for the reason that is to guide the world 
into the perfection. So please come and join and paint the mural that we visualize being hung in our capital of Oregon because it represents all the perfection that we can bestow and that we can bring about here. I love you all and I do love you all from the heart and I believe in you. Thank you. Hey brothers and sisters, uh, we're the hillbillies from Triangle Lake that are tired of being hit by those helicopters that spray pesticide after the clear cuts, and right now he's got who I consider to be uh, the most expert forester who takes an unbiased, holistic position on what's happening with Oregon's forest, and he's going to alert you to who actually owns the most land in Oregon today. We've got Forrester Roy King. Thank you for being here this morning. And thank you for putting this all together. We're all thankful you have one day. And we're thankful the truth gets spoken. The truth will have its way. I think I need to tell you three things. Just a little bit about where I come from. I think I need to tell you a little bit about the vision that I see for this country and for this place in the forest. And I think I need to tell you about the danger imposed by the corporate poisoning of Wayne County. I start with who I am. My name is Roy Green. I'm almost 70. I have nine grandchildren. I have children in different places. I have children in different places in this state. We all live here. Most of us pay taxes. I paid a lot of tax last year on property that I live on and own. About a 30th of the taxes that warehouses are paid on property of equal value. So one of the things that we're looking at and one of the things that I stand for as a person in this county is fair taxation. We need for the larger landowners that own the larger part of this county to step up, not only stop poisoning this county, but start paying their fair share of taxes. Beyond that, beyond that, I've been in the forest for 40 years. I've driven over a million miles. And what I'm going to tell you is largely what I've seen with my eyes, not what I've read in a white paper. I think it's also important for me to tell you my own vision. A long time ago, deep in the woods, I had my vision for this country and for these woods. And I saw a high forested mountain, and I saw a great tree, and it was the tree of life, and there was a river of life, clear as crystal, flowing down from this mountain, and its waters were going out to nurture and care for the humans that live under this mountain. And it was a high place, and it was a beautiful new heaven and new earth, and the old had passed, and the new had come. And so my vision is to help to move the new forward, to help to bring the new in, and to help to put the old away. And now, I would tell you about my experience with forest poisoning. My first experience with was some of my own brothers in arms. I was in the Army Infantry, and I had brothers that were poisoned in the 60s by Agent Orange in Vietnam. They were poisoned. They were not struck down by enemy fire. They were not hit with shrapnel. They were poisoned by Agent Orange, which is very much minus a molecule or two, the same poison that's getting sprayed around our communities and in our forests. And then I saw Agent Orange used again when I fled the system in the 60s, when I got up and I moved away from the corporate world and I moved deep into Southern Oregon and picked up a different life and began to live peacefully in the forest. We looked out and there were great swaths 
of hillsides. Thousands of acres being sprayed with Agent Orange. This was before the mediated agreement. This was in the 70s, in the early 70s. Tan Oak in Southern Oregon was very difficult to manage. It didn't need management. They just needed to work with the force that was there. But they sprayed thousands and thousands of acres of that country. And the spray ran down into the waters. And it poisoned the deer. And the deer had little twisted livers and they staggered in the woods. And we organized at the grassroots level. And we worked with people in the early herbicide and pesticide movement to form the mediated agreement to stop the overt use of Agent Orange within the Forest Service on public lands. So today, I want to remind everybody that today, the Forest Service, without using herbicides and poisons at any appreciable scale, is able to do a very nice job, a better job than the industries here that own private land of managing their forest. So you don't need to use poisons to manage forest. So here's what's underneath this whole thing. Here's what's down underneath this. There is a deeper, a deeper motive in my mind. I see not only a vision, but being an old grandfather and having much experience on this planet, I see conspiracy. It's easy for me to see the conspiracy because for a long time I've been watching. And what I see is very simple. I see the corporate lords poisoning the forest so that they can push people out of the forest into the urban centers. I don't see this just as a move to grow trees on 30-year rotations. I see this as a larger move, like Agent Orange in Vietnam. It wasn't about herbiciding the forest so you could see the movement of troops at night. It was about herbiciding the countryside, killing the agriculture, killing the pollinators, killing the forest, and collecting people into cities in Vietnam that Americans had control of. It was about control. So what's happening today up in our forest is not just about civil culture or trying to grow trees on short rotations. It's about the lords of this county that own hundreds of thousands of acres and are widely invested in this town controlling things in the future. The more that we are moved into these urban centers, the easier it is to manipulate our food, to manipulate our fuel, the easier it is to manipulate the media, manipulate our minds, and control us. And this has always been what the feudal corporate system has been about. Just another modern method of controlling the people. And so how do we break with that? We start with a higher vision. We start with a vision of a poison-free place to live. What if these same people that were poisoning their forest lands, what if they were doing that inside this town? What if my neighbors had a little four-foot wingspan helicopter and they were spraying the yard next to me? You see, the zoning would stop them immediately. In other words, here in this town, we have control over private property. You may think you own your house, but if you think you really own it, you go out and do something that violates the zoning, and you will find out that the collective society around you will tell you what you can and can't do on your land. So we need to get rid of the myth that we have no say over what happens on these private forest lands. And I want to tell something today to everybody here. You own the water in those private forest lands. Behind those lock gates, that's your water. Behind those lock gates, that's your wildlife. Behind those lock gates, those are your salmon. That's yours. So we have a vision of bringing down the poison and we reach out to that vision by taking back our rights to the land. We take back our rights to the water. We don't just tell the governor of this state to stop the poisoning. We tell the governor of this state, we want our water back. We want our wildlife back. They're out there killing bears by the hundreds because the bears strip a few fir trees. 
but there's thousands of acres of nothing but sterile young fir trees, so what else are our bears to eat? And so they're killing our wildlife so they can grow a few more board feet per acre. This is immoral. It is against God and nature, and we have to bring it down. And I want to leave you with one thought. I want to leave you with something that I learned a long time ago and a way that I got myself out of a very tight squeeze and one of the reasons I'm still here and get to have nine grandkids. It's called unity. There must be unity. There must be a coming together and a unity of the people. Everything comes out of that unity. So come together on this people. This is your homeland you're fighting for. Become the real homeland security. Thank you. Roy Keane, is that some wisdom or what? Yes. The book I'm holding up is called Bitter Fog. It's about the struggle that people out where I live in the woods, outside, we're in Lane County, of making Agent Orange illegal. But like Roy just told you, the majority of the herbicide called Agent Orange is available today called 2,4-D. When the government recently, you know, they used to tell us, where's your proof? When we told them that those helicopters spraying pesticides from the sky next to our homes, it was coming into our windows, coming into our house. Kids were getting rushed to the hospital. This woman that wrote this book, if you want to know how callous the government can be, let me tell you what happened to this poor lady. Carol Van Strum, her children were playing in their front yard, in a creek bed. They were hit directly by aerial sprayed pesticide 2,4-D. She called the Department of Forestry, she called all of the government agencies and they all told her there was nothing to worry about. Two weeks later her children's hair had fallen out. They were vomiting blood. They had blood in their stools. She took that to the government agencies and she was told the pesticides are completely safe. The fact that your children got directly sprayed by the liquid pesticide and had their hair fall out and blood come out their bowels is a coincidence, is what the government said. Do you believe that was a coincidence? No. Do you want reform? Yes. Thank you. Now, this woman, having seen that, decided to write a book. She wrote this book talking about the dangers of dioxins and 2,4-D. And do you know what happened to her? Well, she left to go to a court appearance, realized she forgot a file, turned around, went back to her house in the woods, and there she found three Dow chemical executives with two U.S. government forest agency agents installing listening devices on the trees around her house. Her house was burned down by arson and all of her children were killed. The fire inspector said it was clearly arson. He collected the evidence and a week later when she called she was told that he had died mysteriously the day after collecting the evidence, and the evidence was gone. I know who did it. It was Dow Chemical, and you know what they did at that time? They established something in Oregon right then called, and this is who really rules your state, they're called 
Oregonians for food and shelter. Boo! Yeah, let's boo Oregonians for food and shelter. Boo! Yeah, you know what? Here's who Oregonians for food and shelter really are. Their board of directors is Dow Chemical. Their chief executive, Dow Chemical executive. Their board of directors, Monsanto, Warehouser, Syngenta. You know, Oregonians for Food and Shelter calls themselves on their web page a grassroots organization. Hey, in my body, I'm one of them that got tested both by the government and by a private researcher, and they found pesticides in my urine. The two pesticides that they found are 2,4-D, the one we've been talking about, the active ingredient of Agent Orange, and atrazine. Atrazine is now found in 94% of water samples taken in the Midwest because of its heavy use there. Now it's turning up in the bodies of Oregonians. Do you know that the testing done in Triangle Lake yeah, it found that we who live right where the spraying happens have really high elevated levels. But guess what it also proved? It also proved that you all have pesticides in your urine if you go get tested. Virtually 100% of Oregonians have levels that I would certainly consider potentially cancer causing of 2,4-D and atrazine and a whole litany of other herbicides in your urine. How many of you will say no more? No more! So we decided we're going to stand up to the timber industry, but guess what we found out, brothers and sisters? We found out, just like Roy just said, Damn, it really is a conspiracy, you know what? Monsanto, I, I, I got some proof for you right here that if I just told you that Monsanto runs your government, you know, that go in one way and out the other. But I've got the names and you're going to help me prove the fact. When I asked you to name the occupation of each of the following government officials who I selected from... Democratic and Republican presidential administrations to make the point that it does not matter if a Republican or Democrat's in the office, the government is co-opted by these pesticide companies. You shout the word Monsanto when I ask you for their employers. And it's true. These guys are all linked to Monsanto. Michael A. Friedman. Acting Commissioner of the United States Food and Drug Administration, Department of Health and Human Services, Senior Vice President for Clinical Affairs of Pharmaceuticals, for who? Monsanto. Marcia Hale, Assistant to the President of the United States, Director for Intergovernmental Affairs. Director of International Government Affairs, before that for who? Monsanto! Mickey Cantor, how many of you remember him from the good Democratic administration? Well, Mickey Cantor goes from being the Secretary of the United States for Commerce. That sounds boring, but that's all business, that's where the money is, is the Department of Commerce. So he leaves office and goes to become Director member of the board of directors of who? Monsanto. Josh King, Secretary of the United States Department of Commerce, former trade representative of the United States, a member of the board of directors, the director of global communication in the Washington DC office of who? Monsanto. William D. Ruckelhaus, Chief of the Environmental Protection Agency, leaves there and becomes 
a member of the board of directors of who? Monsanto. Michael Taylor, legal advisor to the United States Food and Drug Administration, the Bureau of Foods. Deputy Commissioner for Policy at the United States Food and Drug Administration. Who did he work for before that? Monsanto. Right now he's the head of the Washington DC office of the Monsanto Corporation. Do you detect a trend? Do you see that the government agencies that are supposedly in charge of regulating foods and the environment have been literally co-opted by those very corporations and they've got such a stranglehold for eight years I've been confronting them and I'll tell you, they own Oregon. Oregonians for Food and Shelter runs Oregon. They do it through what's called, and it sounds boring, the Oregon Department of Agriculture. Do you know that that is Monsanto? That is Dow Chemical. That is DuPont. And they control the legislation that gets crafted in Salem. I'm going to end with a few more pesticide facts for you. Let me stress that we're a non-professional environmental group. We have no office. We have no paid staff. We're the actual people that live in the hills that see the helicopters come over our hell house and we puke and vomit blood and go to these government agencies and they turn their back on us. So we've come out of the mountains, we've come to the city, and we're asking you to help. Will you help? Will you start by declaring right now with me that you will personally not use pesticides in your home or property? Raise your hand if you want to that. Sign the coupons here. We want to stuff the governor's, the governor's inbox with those. They're demanding an immediate, an immediate cease to aerial spraying of pesticides next to homes and schools. Please go to the trouble of coming up here and signing up for us. I have several facts, and then the next speaker, and we are ending with another set of reggae music. Fact. Wait, wait, wait. Studies have shown that all persons especially children and pregnant women, all persons commonly experience the following from long-term pesticide exposures. One, cancer. Two, neurological damage. That's nerve damage and brain damage. Three, birth defects. Four, they should get you guys. Number four caused by pesticides is reduced sperm count. Number five, suppressed immune system. Number six, reproductive and developmental harm. And number seven, and why we're directing this to the governor is 70% of all pesticides used in America are applied in agriculture and in Oregon we're not only getting the regular farm use, we're getting the aerial spray use. Guess how far that stuff drifts? Anybody know? On windy days, 20 miles. They've actually tested the air. You can spray and then you can scientifically test every mile out from that spray and you find traces of that pesticide going down in a mount out as far as 20 miles. That is how you have pesticide in you. It's in the air when they spray any of the hills around Oregon and it's coming to us in the air we breathe. I say no. Will you join me in saying no more? Dow Chemical 
running the state of Oregon with Monsanto through Oregonians for food and shelter. Dow Chemical once got caught of having falsified, falsified the death records of their own employees that worked in their pesticide manufacturing plants to make it look like they didn't have a higher cancer rate. All government decisions were made on that study. 20 years later, a private researcher rechecked the material and found out that they actually made up names of employees they didn't have and falsified the records. How many? will join me in saying Dow Chemical sucks! Dow Chemical sucks! Monsanto sucks! Monsanto sucks! And with that, another fact and then the next speaker. Monsanto and Dow Chemical were both revealed to have hired a team of ex- Secret Service agents to spy on, infiltrate, and run black operations against environmental groups and anti-pesticide activists. How many of you will join me and say, no more to that? No more! How many of you have a cat or a dog? How many of you are willing to admit uh, that you use a flea collar? Anybody? Good. Because check this out. If a woman uses a flea collar or a flea soap on a cat or a dog while she's pregnant, she has a 600% greater chance that her unborn baby will develop a brain tumor or leukemia. A 600% increased chance if a pregnant woman has a flea collar on her bed and those are legal. My last fact for you. A recent study found that 100% of pregnant women under the age of 20 have pesticides in their body that were made illegal longer than 20 years ago. Every pregnant young woman has DDT found in her body right now and it hasn't been sold in the United States for 20 years. That's how long these poisons persist in our environment. And so I ask you to end with me by making a pledge. Will you put some of your life energy into creative thought, creative actions to put an end to this pesticide madness? Thank you. Please do sign the coupon. I wanted to introduce this man. He's not an official speaker today, but he came up to me at the table and showed me his hands. He used to spray these pesticides uh, out in the forest, he was a worker, and his hands are still scarred and still injured from that. Here he is. My name is Henry Jones. I spent 23 years out in the woods planting trees to fight fire and burning slash. And I used to work for private companies like IP and Roseboro, a Roseboro lumber company. And we would burn slash, and they never told us that they sprayed their land. And several times I was out on units with black, oily, ugly smoke rising up. And I knew, I told everyone that the unit had been sprayed. And they said, no, it hadn't uh, been sprayed. And I said, yes, it has. And, it was, and uh, I like, got exposed to dioxin. I've been exposed to oust, garlon, crossbow, atrazine, all, all kind of poisons, any kind of poison. I planted trees. I got exposed to firearm, which is a mercury compound. They told us that they didn't tell us what it was. And then my hands got all red and swollen and everything. These people knew what they were doing. And I got poisoned. I now have headaches. I now have uh, bad eczema. My, my feet are rotting. Uh, so these people are liars. And it's time that we put some people in jail. I mean, a regular, a regular jail. Right next to all the other. How about, why don't we keep Guantanamo Bay open and take all those people that are there out and put all the corporate criminals there. No lawyer, 
No trial, you are guilty. Let's stay together and fight. Our next speaker, a, a scientist, doctor, university professor, who is going to tell you exactly how the pesticides are damaging the babies and the, the unborn and the fetuses. Um, come, come forth now and you say your name since I'm not remembering. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ingrid Edstrom and I'm a nurse practitioner here in town and I moved here So I moved here from Massachusetts about six years ago, and I have some information up on the table here about thermography. So I purchased a thermography camera that is able to find problems in the breast three to eight years before the mammograms can detect it. Now what was very interesting is since I had come from Massachusetts, I wasn't aware of the amount of spraying and the genetically modified food issue in Massachusetts at the time. So what I discovered in the course of having the camera and seeing women here in this state, I discovered several very uh, disturbing issues, and this is why I'm here today. So as a medical practitioner, what I was seeing is that women were coming to me that had been herbicidally exposed, that had either been flaggers that stood on the edges of strawberry fields and held up flags, and the reason why they did that is they were trying to figure out which way the air was moving as the helicopters and crop dusters were putting down pesticides and herbicides on strawberry fields. And then I find out that the, the wheat fields are treated in the same way with overspraying, the mint, and several of the other uh, products and the, uh, the crops that are grown here in this valley. So what I was finding is in the course of having this medical practice for the last six years, what I was finding is that only about an eighth of my population have normal breast exams. Only an eighth. And the thermography camera can pick up um, vascular patterns in the breast. And what this is is estrogenic activity that I can actually see in the camera. So when I put people in front of the camera, I can say, you're not an organic eater, are you? And the woman will say, how do you know? And I say, because you look vascularized. You look as though you've been on estradiol, Premarin. Uh, if you're not eating organically, you're getting bovine growth hormones in the meat and the dairy. If you're not eating organically, a lot of the pesticide, pesticide residue, herbicide residue is in your food and what it does is they're estrogen mimickers and they bind in the fat cells and the estrogen sites which are fat bound which are usually in breast. So what I discovered was that Oregon has the second highest breast cancer rate per capita in the nation. And this was absolutely chilling to me. And I was trying to find out, coming from Massachusetts, why on earth did Oregon, that seemed like this pristine, gorgeous place, had the second highest breast cancer rate per capita. And what I discovered was it seems to be related to the herbicide and pesticide spray in the state. So uh, two years ago, what I did is I took down a number of these images, and if anyone had wanted to pick things up, some of these brochures are up here, but infrared breast health, I-N-F-R-A-R-E-D, breast health, and then go to the proactive breast wellness section. And in there, there's a PowerPoint presentation that I've put up, and what I did with that PowerPoint presentation was I went down to um, the county commissioners and the health department at a meeting that was organized by Lisa Arkin from Oregon Toxic Alliance, which is now called Beyond Toxics. And I brought a breast surgeon with me. And what we did is we showed these images to the county commissioners and the health department. And I said, this is what these herbicides are doing to breast tissue, and you can see it. And it's absolutely chilling when these women come in and they know that they've been sprayed and now their breasts that you can see these vascular patterns and hot spots and these women have cancers. And it's, it's very, very troubling to me that the herbicide and pesticide continues. And by taking that PowerPoint down, I was able to get the roadside spraying stopped in Lane County. So, thank you very much. So I think that the idea is educating folks 
I have now gotten the uh, PowerPoint uh, images up to the governor, and I have no idea if he's going to be able to look at these or not. But the, the aspects of the roadside spraying, the clear cutting, spraying along the roads, essentially your, your kids are standing there next to the bus stop, your little dogs, and you are out for a little walk. You're getting this stuff, and the, um, the resins from the pesticides and herbicides get absorbed through the skin. People that are using fly wipe on horses, they have terrible looking scans because it absorbs the skin as well. So all of these herbicides, pesticides, are xenoestrogens or estrogen mimickers, and it looks like estrogen and activates the breast tissue. So if you have little tumors that are beginning to start and you have you know, increased vascular patterns, this is what's really increasing the problem in this state. The other thing that I've discovered and I'm now trying to um, help uh, provide information to is the genetically modified uh, food issue and the, the GMO-free folks, and I know that they're represented here today. The, the real danger with the GMOs, which they have some of them starting here in the valley, and they'll probably be talking a little bit more about this, is that if you have genetically modified crops, they genetically modify these things so they can overspray it with herbicides and pesticides. So the uh, GMO corn and soy, for example, if you're not eating organic corn or soy, every last bit of that is genetically modified. So if you don't eat organically, if you shop at Albertsons and um, are buying sort of conventional food there, 70% of what's in your basket is genetically modified. And we can't seem to get anyone in the state to start labeling it. And I think that if people were to know what is in their food and have the labels put there, Capellas is putting green and um, green and blue dots on their shelves now. And they're the only store in town right now that's doing this so that you can know what's genetically modified and what's gluten-free. And to me, that's really fabulous. I'm supporting the farmer's market here with all these organic farmers that are trying to keep their crops safe from people that are abutters that want to start spraying is the next issue. So if we don't get this GMO stopped, and it could be done on a county by county level, we are all going to have no choice in our food supply. The GMOs with the herbicide overspray is going to be in all our foods, and it's not going to be safe here in the state or anywhere else in the country for that matter. So get involved with the GMO Free Eugene, who I think are here and going to be speaking a little bit later. Um, if you want to go to my website, Infrared Breast Health, and look on the proactive section and actually see what these chemicals are doing to breast tissue. And by all means, try to become a little bit more active so that you can control the food and what you're feeding your family. And I thank you very much for this opportunity. I wasn't on the agenda. And I, I really support what these people are doing. And I thank you ever so much for um, making it possible. Each of those last two speakers, the man that worked with the chemicals and got burnt, and the scientist with the actual product knowledge, weren't listed speakers today, but we're here and we're perfect. We've got one more of our listed speakers, and uh, then I'm hoping to pull my wife up for a final comment. And